back in the beginning of the year 2020, Mount Taal had a series of eruptions threatening the surrounding provinces extending its ashfall as far as Manila. In this session, we will be looking at the morphology of volcanoes. After this session, you will be able to classify volcanoes based on their shape, pinpoint the main parts of a volcano, and characterize the classification of volcanoes. Okay, let's begin. The Philippines is no longer new with tectonic activities. It is because the countries along the belt with more than half of the world's active volcanoes called the Pacific Ring of Fire. Due to the slow but ginormous movement of the Pacific Plate, most surrounding plates tend to be gobbled up and sink towards the mantle in a process called subduction, which then in turn generates fissures and friction paving way for the creation of volcanoes. These volcanoes come in different shapes and sizes. Volcanoes are elevated landforms generally with an opening in the summit called the crater, where lava, rock fragments, steam, gases, ash, heat, and other volcanic materials are ejected out on the surface of the earth. There are many parts of volcanoes, but generally, volcanoes vary in the degree of slope, where the flank could be a predictor as to how viscous the magma is inside and how long it travels inside the vent as it flows outside as lava. The size of crater also varies by volcano. The crater is an opening found in the summit of a volcano. The opening outside a volcano is called a fissure. A number of fissures may surround the volcano along its base and slope and can also be an indicator of a volcano's activity together with the wideness of the base where below the magma is stored in the magma chamber. There are three major types of volcanoes, stratovolcano, shield volcano, and cinder volcano. Stratovolcano or composite volcano are formed by layers of accumulated thick, slow-moving lava, which then in turn creates steep slopes. Composite volcanoes are also the most dangerous type of volcano. As magma stored is of high density, evident with viscous lava spewed during eruption. When composite volcanoes explode, significant area of the summit may collapse, which leaves a larger crater called caldera. This happened during the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in Visayas. Other examples of stratovolcano are Mount Mayon in Luzon, Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa, Mauna Loa in Hawaii, and is the highest volcano on Earth, Mount Fujiyama in Japan, and Mount Vesuvius in Italy, which was infamous for destroying the ancient city of Pompeii. Shield volcano, on the other hand, is formed by loose and fluid lava, creating low and broad slope resembling an armor shield. Since the lava spewed by shield volcano is fluid, it runs down its side, which in turn increases its size. Most of the volcanoes classified as shield volcanoes are found in the islands of Hawaii, such as Kilauea, Mauna Kea, and Mauna Loa. And last on the list, cinder volcanoes which are remnant of an explosive eruption of fluid lava. Eruptions of cinder volcanoes are short-lived, which can be described as a wild fountain of lava. Cinder volcanoes appear dome-like in shape, an example of which is the Mohawk Volcano in California, Cerro Negro in Nicaragua, and Mount Fox in Australia. There are other volcanoes with distinct characterizations. Caldera Complex are volcanoes which when they erupt, creates larger depression instead of building layers increasing the size of a volcano. Lava Dome are volcanoes which form inside a crater of a larger volcano, or along its side. Submarine volcanoes are volcanoes which lie across the ocean floor and are mostly formed by converging oceanic plates, and glacial volcanoes, which are volcanoes covered by glaciers. These are the classification of volcanoes based on their morphologies. Morphology of volcanoes may serve as guide as to how the stored magma may be characterized. We will talk more about this in the upcoming session 
along with how volcanoes are classified based on their activity. This time, let's check what you've learned. What are the types of volcanoes based on their morphology or shape? How do the type of volcano differ from one another? And what are the main parts of a volcano? If you were able to do so, then you successfully learned about the classification of volcanoes, the main parts of volcanoes, and the characteristics of volcanoes. And for your takeaway, remember, we may be of different race, color, gender, and height. Importantly, our idealism and principles in life. But these differences should not be seen as weakness or even strength. These differences should be something that unites us as it was. These differences or our diversity as human species help shape the world we live in and should continue to help us thrive even in the new world. No discrimination, just appreciation. And with that, I'm going to leave you with a wish for a blessed day. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. See you again on the next one.